My name is uh, Harihara Bhaskaran and uh, I'm a faculty in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Case Western Reserve University and uh, I carry out research in bioengineering in general biomedical engineering. Basically I get fascinated by nature. Nature uh, has done things uh, far more efficiently than we have in uh, several areas and especially when it comes to applications involving um, biomedicine uh, following nature uh, makes, a, makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. So um, we have uh, currently almost all uh, research areas we have touch upon some biomimetics uh, mm -hmm. not uh, through uh, I mean, all the way through but uh, uh, in some aspect um, we have uh, biomimicry or biomimetics. Biomimicry can be at several different levels um, so one could be, uh, I mean people have looked at uh, the forms, I mean it's very easy to look at the forms and try to mimic the forms, but I think my mimicry, in my opinion, should be at both form and function. Um, so uh, uh, so in that sense, so one has to understand well how um, the biomimetic form and function are related to each other. So, um, so we do spend some time uh, studying that. Why do you know lungs, for example, have these so many bifurcating structures? Uh, why do why does microvasculature um, of various tissues differ uh, from one to other? Uh, it's uh, tied uh, very much to the function of the uh, tissue or um, uh, or the organ. So um, biomimetics. Uh, um, Although currently it's used um, um, to represent the form, um, I think it is, uh, it's also involved in um, obtaining a form from nature that mimics the function that we want in the, you know, the tissue or any device we are creating. Um, so it, it's both form and function as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so the one project is the uh, Guild project where um, we, this, we proposed a design based on uh, the natural uh, design of the gills uh, uh, that could be uh, implemented um, and also fabricated um, for use in uh, synthetic gills. We primarily envision this for underwater, um, as an underwater breathing apparatus. So the idea is to um, develop a device where you can actually pump a lot of water through through the mm -hmm. device because um, and at the same time perform the efficient function of um, transporting oxygen from uh, the water that you're pumping through the device uh, to your lungs. So um, that means you need it has to be extremely efficient. So mm -hmm. there is um, uh, so. It, usually these things in, in any uh, artificial device comes at a cost, so we actually pump in a lot of energy, like we you know, push a lot of water through, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, f you know, fish, uh, the natural gills do this with you know, unbelievable efficiency. They have a mechanism of actually flowing water through these uh, structures uh, in which like, uh, they can extract almost everything out of the water in terms of oxygen. I mean, so nature has a really good mechanism to uh, extract um, oxygen uh, from water. And um, so uh, uh, animals containing gills, um, uh, they actually have, I mean, they do it very well. And uh, any device that mimics uh, this at some level uh, will uh, actually can retain or uh, can retain the efficiency of the nature in terms mm -hmm. of extracting uh, and at the same time reducing the cost of the whole operation. Uh, using a device that's based on natural design, um, I mean it, it really, uh, I mean to me it was a, a great approach and um, uh, the <coughs> studying natural design for that purpose um, 
really helped me understand the subject very well, uh, a lot more, I mean, the biomimetics in general. If the funding continued, it would have been a device that we mm -hmm. could have, uh, but uh, we had only like small scale prototypes. We also have the, uh, the uh, vascularization of uh, tissue engineered constructs, um, the design of the blood vessels, um, we utilize uh, features from nature. Uh, that actually are quite, um, I would say, fantastic. I mean, it's unbelievable in terms of how the design overcomes uh, the limitations that uh, we currently have in uh, any artificial design, and mm -hmm. uh, still uh, perform the function uh, beautifully. Those design uh, features we use uh, in the design of uh, tissue constructs with uh, built-in microvasculature. Our goal is to actually um, develop uh, tissues with uh, blood flow structure built in these tissues. And uh, we use uh, the microvascular design uh, designs that are in um, human tissues as a starting point um, for uh, designing our uh, own structures. Um, in artificial uh, structures. Mm -hmm. The goal is uh, um, to put the tissue in and connect the blood flow structure to the existing structure so that mm -hmm. you will have instant uh, nutrient availability to every part of the uh, artificial tissue that will go in. So right now we are targeting skin, that's what the grant is for. Uh, skin tissue engineering is um, one of the oldest um, um, tissue engineering areas. Um, it's been around for a while, but uh, all those um, uh, skin constructs that are made, it's approved for clinical use, they don't have any, uh, I mean, they take like anywhere from week to three weeks, uh, about three weeks for complete vascularization or the blood, mm -hmm. uh, for the nature, I mean, the natural blood flow structures to form in this uh, implanted uh, tissue. But we hope to like form it instantly so that we get much better function. Great. We could also compare to um, these uh, currently available uh, skin uh, constructs. So in a third project, uh, in the third project, uh, uh, which is uh, in collaboration with um, the Department of Biology, uh, we have um, we are developing cartilage constructs again, it's tissue constructs. Um, our goal is to um, mimic the ultra structure that is present in um, uh, cartilage um, so that the um, our tissue construct that we design or we develop will have the same mechanical uh, strength which is lacking in all the current um, tissue constructs developed. So our uh, design as well as approach itself is um, based on how to develop the biomimetic structure. Whenever we look at a problem, we look at um, uh, the critical part of the problem that has not been solved and uh, look into nature's uh, way of solving that particular part. So that's where we try to actually implement some of these things, features, um, biological features in there. So I, I mentioned about the tissue and currently there, there, are, there is no liver tissue that you can implant or no uh, pancreatic tissue that you can implant with success. I mean, people can actually, you know, you can have a, I'm talking about artificial tissues, not mm. like um, <clears throat> transplants. Right. Okay. So, um, uh, that case, that really gives you an opportunity to make a difference there by looking at into the structure and understand, okay, there are these requirements that we need to address. and. Uh, whether we, if we can address that using um, nature, that will, I mean, that should solve the problem. Whether it has solved the problem, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know yet because it's, my research is not at the stage yet. So it will take years for me to give you the answer whether it has solved the problem by using natural design. Uh, but I, I mean, I sincerely believe it, it, it will because nature has solved this problem by that way. So. Uh, I think by doing it, we, we should solve that problem. We utilize, I mean, biomimicry in various stages. Every problem that we try to solve uh, has a, you know, uh, 
corresponding uh, problem in nature that nature has solved. It would be impossible to mimic every part of it, but even if we can mimic the, that what we believe as the most efficient part of the design, uh, it can at least simulate the function of that particular unit or the design element uh, in, uh, in, the, in what we are trying to do. Uh, so I think that it will have a tremendous impact on, I think, uh, the future design. Definitely both in education okay, and um, research, um, biomimicry has a major role.